Thanks for coming back to another episode of Real Life Pharmacology. You can find us at reallifepharmacology.com. I've got the free uh, giveaway there for uh, good for students and, and test takers and those looking to pass their board exams, some highly testable things on the top 200 drugs, 31-page PDF. So um, take a peek at that. If you're new to us today listening, I hope you find uh, the content valuable. Um, I think you will. I speak a lot about things that actually happen in real life and things that you see, uh, as well as cover the, the basics of pharmacology with each medication. So if you enjoy the show, leave us a review ratings on, on iTunes. So let's get into it, not waste any more of your time. We've got Cinemet today. So this is basically an anti-Parkinson's medication. We use this med to treat the symptoms of Parkinson's. So this drug does not reverse Parkinson's. Parkinson's is a brutal, uh, brutal disease state for sure. Uh, can lead to some really distressing, really uncomfortable, um, problematic symptoms uh, for our patients. I work in geriatrics primarily. Uh, that is my background. Uh, so I've, I've seen a lot of patients with Parkinson's for sure. So we'll give you the, the basics on cinnamon, what we're trying to do here. Uh, this medication is a, a dopamine replacement. And if you remember in Parkinson's, uh, we found through studies and research that there's basically a lack of dopamine. To simplify it, a lack of dopamine within the brain. And so what cinnamon is, is essentially a dopamine replacement. Uh, we're giving that to try to help with their symptoms of Parkinson's. And a good, easy, simple way to remember uh, some of the symptoms of Parkinson's is TRAP. So that's tremor, acronym for tremor, uh, muscle rigidity, where those muscles just have a really difficult time moving and you can't move limbs and things like that. Uh, akinesia, so that's really a total inability uh, to move muscles or make movements. And postural changes is the P uh, part of the, the tra TRAP acronym, which can certainly lead to um, balance issues, coordination issues. And, you know, in my practice, uh, long-term care and working in assisted livings and elderly folks, uh, these patients, they have a lot of falls and it is really really or they can have a lot of falls and it's a really really difficult thing because you can obviously have a lot of injuries a lot of complications um, from those falls and because of their Parkinson's disease uh, sometimes um, I wish we could could do a lot more for them and have uh, better medications that that really cured the problem but we're we're not there unfortunately so mechanistically uh, Levado so Cinemet is a combination of carbidopa and levodopa. Cinemet's the brand name. Mechanism of action is levodopa crosses into that blood-brain barrier, so it gets into the brain basically, and gets converted to the active form or active dopamine. Now, there's two drugs in Cinemet, carbidopa and levodopa. So levodopa I just mentioned, carbidopa, this acts by preventing the peripheral breakdown of levodopa. Levodopa gets broken down at a high rate out in the peripheral bloodstream before it gets to the brain. So carbidopa allows that levodopa to not be broken down and basically increases the uh, effectiveness and its ability to, to get into the brain and, and do its, its action, which is replacing dopamine because we've got a shortage uh, in Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's is absolutely the, the main reason why you're likely going to see this medication used. Uh, it is dosed multiple times per day in Parkinson's disease, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. But I did want to mention you will occasionally see it for restless leg syndrome. I have seen that happen, uh, see it be used for that a, a few times. So particularly, uh, most commonly, patients struggle with restless legs at night. So if you just see one dose a day at night for cinnamon, likely, 99% of the time, it's probably for restless leg syndrome because that uh, kinetics of cinnamon, it is so short-acting that we've got a, 
we've generally got to dose it multiple times per day. And those drug levels are very, very sensitive. So if we get too low, we start having more symptoms of Parkinson's. If we get too high of concentrations in the blood of Cinemet, we run into um, toxicity, obviously, elevated levels of the, the medication there. And some of those side effects that can result because of those higher concentrations, uh, GI upset, nausea, and vomiting. Definitely got to look out for this. If you see that, we might be being too aggressive with the, the dose of cinnamon there. Now, if you remember back, or you should go back and listen to the antipsychotics lecture as well, because dopamine is, plays a huge role in psychosis, schizophrenia. And if we get too much dopamine, we can cause hallucinations. So that's what we can do with cinnamon if we get too much dopamine. Now, there's other reasons we could have uh, hallucinations with Parkinson's disease. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. But if you notice that, you know, well, maybe they're getting more hallucinations after they take their dose or after they take their bigger dose of the day, um, that dose may need to uh, be tweaked and, and adjusted. So definitely pay attention to that if you're in a nursing type situation or maybe a, a pharmacist type situation. Um, pay attention to that. If they're having those symptoms, uh, those concentrations may be getting a, a little bit too high. Cinemet can also cause, contribute to orthostasis, so drop in blood pressure, dizziness, um, which Parkinson's patients are already prone uh, to some of that, so that's a, a big challenge in, in using this medication. So I, I mentioned the frequent dosing, and this medication generally tends to, to get started pretty quickly, and it tends to wear off pretty quickly. And what that means is to maintain steady state levels, kind of steady concentrations over a period of time, you essentially need to dose it more frequently. Now, we do have some extended release formulations and different products as well to try to help keep those drug concentrations level so we don't get to those toxic levels and run into side effects and we don't get to those low levels and we run into the trap type symptoms, the Parkinson's type symptoms. So um, that dosing can be very, very sensitive, very, very touchy, and that's a good thing to uh, educate our patients on, caregivers, uh, nurses should be aware of that as, as well, um, that if we miss that dose by an hour, two hours, three hours, that could um, definitely throw a patient off, and, and patients might recognize that as well. I mentioned the, the nighttime dosing specifically, usually going to be for RLS. Uh, if you ever see Cinemat dosed once a day, uh, pretty unlikely that it's being used for Parkinson's, but obviously you, you got to look at it and um, uh, assess that and, and make sure it, it is appropriate there. So if you're enjoying the podcast today, be sure to go check out meded101.com slash store. Lots of resources there for pharmacists, pharmacy students, uh, board prep exam for NAPLEX and BCPS, BCGP. Also got stuff for nurses, uh, NCLEX and things of that nature as well. So meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Uh, go support our sponsor there. With that, I'm going to finish up on drug interactions with Cinemet. Uh, first thing I always think about is drugs that block dopamine. So if we've got any type of medication that blocks dopamine, uh, so metoclopramide, which is a, a GI medication, antipsychotics, they block dopamine, that's going to reduce the effectiveness and potentially exacerbate Parkinson's symptoms. So we have to remember those medications can worsen uh, Parkinson's symptoms and potentially um, reduce the effectiveness there of, of cinnamon. Uh, lower blood pressure, I think that's kind of common sense. If you add on other medications that can lower blood pressure, Cinnamon can also do that as well. Um, those in combination can put our patient at risk of orthostasis, falls, which our Parkinson's patients are, are already at risk for, unfortunately. Uh, a couple of um, 
interactions as far as binding cinnamon and reducing con- concentrations. So iron preparations, oral iron preparations, uh, so ferrous sulfate, ferrous gluconate, things like that, those can reduce absorption of cinnamon. So if you've got a patient that's really struggling to get their levels under control, definitely take a look at their med list. You see, oh yeah, they're on iron three times a day and they're taking it with their cinnamon or very close to the time that they take their cinnamon. That may definitely throw somebody off. So keep in mind those dose changes with other medications can certainly impact the absorption of other medications. And in this case, cinnamon, of course. One other kind of unique thing is a a food diet type interaction with cinnamon. I can't say I've seen it a lot, um, but higher protein diets can impact absorption of cinnamon. So if patients are eating inconsistently or they've started a new diet where they're, you know, really ramping up protein intake, uh, there is the potential that it could alter uh, their levels of the, the cinnamon medication. So keep that in mind. Always so, so important to clinically monitor these patients. And if you've ever got questions as to whether they're taking their medication or drug interactions and where they're at clinically, just ask them, review it with them. You know, what time of the day do you have symptoms of rigidity and really signs of maybe Parkinson's symptoms coming on? That might indicate that their drug levels are lower at that time and maybe you increase a dose right before that time frame. Same thing, if you've got GI upset, if you run into hallucinations at various times of the day, or patients noticing it at a specific time of day, definitely go take a peek. When are you taking your cinnamon? You know, what drug levels, what concentrations do we think um, you're getting? Are you getting more at a certain time or less at a certain time? And really kind of try to match up those clinical symptoms with whether their drug concentrations may be high or low based upon the the dosing that we're doing. So I hope you enjoyed the podcast today. We're going to finish up there. Leave us a review rating on iTunes. Greatly, greatly appreciated and has uh, definitely helped us grow our audience. So if you've got the time, go take care of that. Do that. Um, Incredibly appreciative of the uh, outpouring of support uh, for the podcast. So take care. Have a great day and uh, check us out at reallifepharmacology.com.